think of a bass player who has been sidelined quite as hard as Jason Newstead. But despite being completely buried on Injustice For All, he actually does have really sick tone, great bass lines, and today we're gonna talk a little bit more about him. So thank you to Harrison on Patreon for the suggestion. Now many of the players that I've spotlighted in this series have very specific gear, like they always use a Gibson or they always use a jazz bass, and Jason is not one of those bass players. His bass collection was absolutely massive and he was constantly experimenting with different instruments like walls and alembics and specters, as well as the usual suspects like Fender and Ernie Ball. On the other hand, he was a lot more consistent with his amp selection. He was almost always playing an Ampeg SVT or SVT2 on top of the classic 8x10 fridges. If it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. <laughs> As for pedals, Jason really just had to do a lot of the same stuff that Cliff Burton was doing, and so you'll see a lot of the same pedals like the Morley Power Fuzzwa, the Sansamp BDDI, uh, a Boss Bass Chorus, uh, an MXR Phase 100, and a Boss Flanger. The dude really, really liked his modulation stuff. By the way, I have already done an episode on Cliff Burton, so you don't have to ask me for that. It's right here, or in the description there's a link. Just go click on it and you can see it there. Anyway, let's take that information and see if we can make the Jason Newstead sound on one of the bases I've got, as well as the Zoom B1X4. If you don't already have one of these, I highly recommend it. These things are like 120 bucks, and as you've seen in this series, there's a lot you can do with them. I'll have an affiliate link down in the description. You can go pick one up from Zounds and then support the channel at the same time. Thanks in advance. All right, let's talk about which bass we're gonna use for this. Though he was using an incredible variety of instruments, the common thread among everything that he was using was that they had two pickups, whether that was a jazz bass with dual single coils, or a Spectre with a PJ setup, or maybe a wall with dual humbuckers. I happen to really like the dual humbucker sound, so for today, I've got the Close Apollo. This is a bass made by a local manufacturer here in Utah, and as you can see, we've got dual soap bar humbuckers that sound really, really great. On top of that, it's got carbon and fiber. It's really interesting, and if you want more about it, of course, I've got a review on my channel, and a little bird has told me that the bass channel is going to be doing their own review, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. As for how we're going to set the controls on this, we're just gonna everything all the way up, for the most part. If you don't have something with humbuckers like this at home, just use a jazz bass or a PJ bass, turn the controls all the way up, and it'll get you in the ballpark just fine. Over on the Zoom B1X4, I've got an Ampeg SVT and the 810 cabinet, so let's just run our bass through that and we'll see how the clean tone sounds as played with a pick, because Jason basically played everything with a pick. Sounds pretty great, but let's kick it up a notch and see how this exact same setup sounds in a more aggressive song like Enter Soundman. sounded really good, but I think we can get a little bit more aggressive for the lines that Jason was playing on And Justice For All. When you can hear them, they actually sound pretty dirty.
To achieve that more aggressive sound, which is basically just like a, an SVT being pushed, I've added the Sanzamp BDDI, or what Zoom calls the bass derv. So let's see how that sounds. happy with that. It sounds really thick. It sounds really aggressive. Cool. As I said when we were talking about Jason's pedals, he was a huge fan of modulation and had tons of different ones. You can get whatever you want on here. We've got phaser, flanger, chorus, anything you could ever want. I myself am pretty partial to chorus, and I especially like the Corona Tri one on here, which is basically their version of the TC Electronic Chorus because it's got a mix knob on it. So that allows us to get a lot of nice modulation without things being too oversaturated. Here's how that sounds. All right, I think that that sounds pretty killer myself. But for those of you keeping track at home, you'll know that we've only done four things on this patch, and the zoom actually gives us five slots. So what are we gonna put in that last slot? Wah, obviously. You can't play Cliff's parts without it, so it's gotta be there. But to be perfectly honest, come here, I gotta tell you something. The wah on this pedal is not very good. I think if you really, really wanted to, to nail the Metallica, you know, fuzz wah bass sound, I would just go get the Morley Power Fuzz wah. It's gonna sound worlds better than this thing. Now, if you think that you can get the wah on this thing to sound better than what I can, then please do go to my Patreon and download it or just like look at the settings that I've got there. It is free. You don't have to be a Patreon to, to download or look at the patch. It, of course, does help me out. So if you are getting value out of these videos, I would definitely appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I tried to make this one a little bit shorter than my normal videos just to cut right to the chase. So if you enjoyed that, then do click the like button, subscribe to see future videos if you want. You can also subscribe to my personal channel where I do more Zoom stuff. I've been shooting this pedal out against the real world equivalents. For example, I've got this rat here that I'm going to compare. So if you wanna see how you know this stacks up to the real thing, then uh, go give my personal channel a subscribe so that you can see it when that video comes out. Anyway, if there's a specific bass player you'd like to see on this series, do leave me a comment down below and I will see you next time. AMP out!